Lectures on the Basics of Biblical Greek Chapters 3 and 4 Pronunciation In our last lesson, we introduced you to Koine Greek, the common Greek of the New Testament era, many people's second language. We talked about learning Greek. Our goal, of course, is to read from the New Testament, and so we will focus on the basics that are necessary to do so. Part of learning Greek involves regular work, discipline, and it's often helped by a partner. We also looked at the Greek alphabet and the writing of the lowercase letters. Let's take a couple of minutes to review the Greek alphabet. The first letter is alpha. It sounds like the A in father. Beta is next. It sounds like the B in Bible. Gamma is a G sound, as in the word gone. Delta is a D sound as in the word dog. Epsilon is a short e, as in met. Zeta is similar to the last letter in the English alphabet. It's like the z in days. Eta is a long e sound, like the ey in obey. Theta is a single Greek letter the, that is equivalent to two English letters together. It is TH, as in thing. Yoda is the short I, but it's pronounced as the I in intrigue. Kappa is the K sound, as in kitchen. Lambda the L sound, as in law. Mu, one of those letters that looks very different in its lowercase form, is the M sound, as in mother. Nu, often confused with the English V, is like the N in nu. Xi is another one of the letters that require two English letters to make the sound. It's KS, sort of like the X in axiom. Omicron is the short O sound, as in not. P is the letter P, as in peach. Rho is the R sound, as in rod. Sigma comes in two forms, both medial and final, as in study. Tau is the T sound, as in talk. Upsilon is the U sound, but it's best pronounced as the German umlauted U. U. Phi carries the sound of two English letters, P and H, as in phone. Key is the hard CH sound, as in lock. Psi again conveys the sound of two English letters, P and S. It's like lips, and omega is the long O sound as in tone. Today's lesson covers additional factors necessary for the pronunciation of Koine Greek using a system that developed in the Renaissance. It's important with a dead language like Koine Greek to still pronounce it as that pronunciation, that additional sense, 
helps in the learning. We'll look at pronouncing letters, breathing marks, diphthongs, punctuation, and diacriticals. One of the best ways to learn the Greek alphabet is to pronounce the letters out loud as you write them down. As you go along, you will discover that these letters listed here sound just like their English counterparts. Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Yoda, Kappa, Lambda, Mu, Nu, Pi, Rho, Sigma, and Tau. The letter Gamma in Greek sounds like a G in English, except when it doubles or combines with another letter formed deeply in the throat. This usage is called the nasal gamma, so the leading gamma gets read as an N sound. So instead of agelos, it's angelos, from which we get our word angel. So if a gamma occurs before a gamma, before a kappa, before a ki, or before a xi, it will be nasalized in enunciation. Vowels in Greek are enunciated differently. Epsilon and omicron are short, and short generally means quick sounds. Eta and omega are always long, and their tone is held a bit longer, A and O. Alpha and Yoda can either be long or short, and the duration of the sound may be an indicator that way. We're not going to press it too hard in this class. So while you are helped on your way by familiarity with the sounds of English vowels and consonants, there are some distinctives in the behavior of Greek. Um, the nasal gamma is one example, and variations in sound length with vowels are another. We now turn to a number of features in modern printed examples of Koine Greek, which were not part of Koine Greek in antiquity. In antiquity, Koine Greek was written all in capital letters, with no spaces between the words and no punctuations. When a line came to an end, one continued the word on the next line. The only way one could read Greek in antiquity was to read it out loud. Modern study of Corne Greek has editors which add various markings to the text to help the student read the text out loud and to help the student, at, in some cases, figure out the form of the word. What are some of those marks? The first example are breathing marks. There are two kinds of breathing marks, rough and smooth. Rough breathing marks occur on initial vowels and diphthongs, occasionally. A rough breathing mark may occur above an initial row also. It looks like a small backwards comma raised to the top of the line. And it's typically placed above the vowel or diphthong or row unless that letter is a capital and then it precedes the letter. In terms of pronunciation, a rough breathing mark adds an initial H sound to the word. So, in the example upsilon p epsilon rho, it's not uper, but he pair. I put the emphasis on the first syllable, although it normally falls in the last, just to stress the, the, the rough breathing mark.
hyper is the proper pronunciation of the word. If an initial vowel or diphthong does not have a rough breathing mark, it will have a smooth breathing mark, which looks like an apostrophe placed above the vowel or diphthong. It adds no sound whatsoever. It's basically saying there's no initial H sound. And so alpha P omicron would be pronounced a paw. No H sound. Diphthongs are combinations of two vowels that go together to make one sound. In Greek, the diphthongs are alpha yoda, which is pronounced as the ai in aisle, so iro. A second diphthong is epsilon yoda, which is pronounced as the ei in eight, and so a. Omicron yoda is a third diphthong, very common, and it's pronounced as the oi in oil, so oikia. Alpha upsilon is a fourth dip, uh, diphthong. It's pronounced like the au in sauerkraut, so autos. Omicron upsilon is a fifth diphthong, and it is pronounced as the OU in soup. So, UDE. Upsilon Yoda is a sixth diphthong. It's pronounced as the UI in sweet. So, HUIOS. And lastly, Epsilon Upsilon is pronounced as the EU in feud, and so euthus. Since diphthongs are a bit challenging, I'm going to pause the presentation at this point so that you can practice each one several times. When you're ready to go on, just click the advance arrow at the bottom. Greek has three diphthongs that are called improper diphthongs because they do not behave like others. Each diphthong is formed by a vowel with a yoda subscripted under it. So although there are two vowels together, the yoda does not change the sound of the main vowel. So alpha yoda subscript is ah, as in hora. Eta with a yoda subscript is a, as in graphe. Omega with a yoda subscript is o, as in logo. Once in a while, two vowels that normally form a diphthong are not a diphthong. And the way this is indicated in printed Greek is through the use of two dots above the second letter of the supposed diphthong, saying, this is not a diphthong. So the Greek name for Isaiah is not a zaios, but there's an extra syllable here, a sa -e -os. The iris is saying the alpha iota is not a diphthong. Pronounce those vowels separately. Punctuation, like breathing marks, were not part of the text in antiquity. They've been added by modern editors to help the student figure out what's going on in the sentence. There are four punctuation marks in Greek. The comma looks like and acts like a comma in English, as does the period. But the semicolon, which is a harder stop than the comma, but not as hard a stop as a period, is indicated in Greek by a raised dot, not by the semicolon as we know it. And here's the confusing one. 
the question mark in Greek looks like an English semicolon. So of the punctuation marks, this is the one to which you must pay attention. If in Greek you see what looks like a semicolon, it is in fact a question mark. Other diacriticals occasionally show up in Greek. For example, if two vowels um, from the ending of one word and the beginning of another word are both short, one may drop out, as in the example here, and a pa emu becomes apemu. It's like a contraction, an elision that occurs. Notice the omicron dropped out and the apostrophe was added. Greek also places accents on particular uh, syllables in the word. Again, this is later editorial to help with enunciation. Uh, the acute accent goes up to the right. The grave accent or grave accent goes down to the right. And the circumflex is a squiggly line or sometimes a small tent above the vowel. What does this mean for you as a reader? Simply put stress on that syllable. So it's I te o, not I te o. It's the os, not the os. It's hognos, not hognos. One can study the rules of Greek enunciation, but learning occurs by reading, reading out loud. So I'm going to walk very slowly through this example. I will pause the slideshow at the end of the example and encourage you to repeat it before you continue the presentation. Here we go. The first word has a smooth breathing mark, no H, so it's pronounced N. The second word also has a smooth breathing mark, but notice the accent is on the improper diphthong, RK. The third word in the first line has a smooth breathing mark with an accent on the first syllable, AIN. The fourth word has a rough breathing mark with no accent. Remember the rough breathing mark adds an H sound, HA. And the last word in the first line has a stress on the first syllable with the acute accent, logos. The line as a whole reads, NRK ain ha logos. Translation, in the beginning was the word. Line two, chi. It has a, a grave accent on the last syllable because that word is followed by another word. That's why you use the grave accent instead of the acute accent on the final syllable. And then our friend ha again, and logos again, and ain again. The fifth word is a single syllable with an emphasis on the omicron, pros. It is followed by the article ton, and then the word for God, which you probably guessed by now. Theon. The whole line reads, Kai halagos ein proston theon. And the word was with God. The last line repeats words that we've had previously. Kai theos ein ha logos. Kai theos ein ha logos. And the word was God. So the whole verse reads this way. N R K ain halogos. Kai halogos ain proston the on. Kai theos ain halogos. I'll pause the presentation now and ask you to try and read this through out loud a couple of times. The focus of this lesson has been on pronouncing Greek. 
We're using a system that developed during the Renaissance. Parts of it are artificial, such as breathing marks, punctuation, and diacriticals. But those help make sense of the text, especially for the beginning reader. The most important activity, though, at this point, is to practice, practice, practice. Go syllable by syllable, then repeat the whole word, then go on to the next word. But please, practice out loud. And if your roommate or friend thinks you're a little strange doing this, just tell them you're speaking in tongues, and they'll probably leave you alone.